Now this illustration deals with single machine and location in accordance with 440.8. And the purpose of this change is to let the user of the NEC know that a split mini unit is not to be installed above a tub zone requirements of 440.8 and handler. And as you can see the unit there, it is installed out of the zone of three foot horizontally and eight foot vertically. And understanding these components, we're looking at air handling units, compressor and refrigeration pipes. That makes up this unit. And these can be set anywhere within the dwelling, see. And then the uh, note says that the split mini units must be located above or out of the three foot horizontally and eight foot uh, vertical zone rule. And basically that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate where you can locate and install these milli uh, or split milli units uh, in a bathroom area. This illustration deals with the general rules of a disconnecting means with a cover or a door that uh, you could uh, have access to energized components by just uh, opening it. And the purpose of the change was to require under these conditions a tool or a locking means. But now as you see in the locking means above uh, at the top of the illustration, you don't have to have the uh, tag necessarily there, but you need the lock or you need a tool to unscrew a screw or something to gain access and that's to keep the unqualified from opening and getting into that area like a kid, nosy kid, or, or somebody that's just unknowledgeable that gets in there that's not qualified to do so. So uh, just a lock and not a tag would be required or a special tool. And then I'd like to call something out to you that GFCI protection now of the circuitry to an AC unit is not required by the exception two to 210.8F, which is on page around 81 of the NEC. And these are important uh, rules to protect uh, the unqualified people who may gain access just being nosy, so to speak. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with the rating and setting for an individual motor compressor in accordance with 440.22a exception 1 and exception 2. Now the purpose of the change was to uh, let the user of the NEC know that you could raise the overcurrent device above the 175 percent and even uh, select it lower than 175 percent but when you apply the 225 percent rule you'd have to round down. You couldn't round up. And that's what the calculation to the left boxed in information is showing you. That you can round up above the 175%. But the illustration and calculation to the right, it, using the 225% rule, you cannot round up. You'd have to round down. And that's what the notes 1 and 2 are telling you. They're just basic, basically letting you know that you can do the same thing in this section 440.22a that you do in 430.52c1 uh, in that area. And of course the NEC loop gives you the section for conductors, overcurrent devices, and overloads, and the disconnect, which is mainly the main uh, sections you look at to design a circuit, branch circuit, to uh, slice power with the disconnecting means uh, to the AC unit. So uh, that's all this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC, when to round up and when to round down, based upon the 175% rule or the 225% rule. Now this illustration deals with the disconnecting means required for emergency shutdown in accordance with NEC 445.19b. And the purpose of this change, mainly just paraphrasing it, is to locate this disconnect for an emergency shutdown of the generator when the generator has a rating greater than 15 kW. Now notice in the uh, right, the arrow pointing 
uh, to the generator. It says the generator is greater than 15 kW and gives some references for you to look at to get a good handle on this requirement. 445.19b, 250.30, informational notes 1 and 2, and then 230. Uh, uh, or 250.35, excuse me, when it's a permanently installed uh, type generator. And then your uh, notes in here in the blue, and they're not notes, all notes, some of them are call outs. Uh, they help you get a better handle on uh, uh, this type of installation. And that's all this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with the disconnecting means and the emergency shutdown in accordance with 445.19c. And we're dealing with a dwelling unit here. And the purpose of the change basically states, and again I'm paraphrasing, a disconnect switch of some sort or a card and plug connection could serve as your disconnect. But we do need an emergency generator shutdown uh, means in accordance with 445.19c. Now read the note, read your call outs uh, in blue, typing, and you'll get a very good handle on exactly what this requirement is requiring the installer or the designer to do. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with the maximum rating or setting of an overcurrent protection device for transformers rated over 1,000 volts in accordance with uh, 450.3a uh, and table 450.3a. And notice in the table itself, revisions have been made. The note one, you know, has been uh, deleted. Uh, uh, in various columns and of course uh, you still have any location it's an unsupervised location mainly and then you look at the uh, supervised locations and you can see the revisions taking place now also revisions were taking place with the notes below the table but now to me what we what the user would do they just review to the notes and see uh, whether they're applicable or not so and that's basically what took place uh, with this uh, revision. Uh, and that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Beware, be very aware that there are changes uh, in this table, as well as the notes. Now this illustration deals with the maximum rating or setting of an overcurrent protection device for transformers 1,000 volts and less. Uh, in accordance with our new table, 450.3b. And basically, the purpose of the change here was just to delete the notes and just use numbers to reference the information below the table. And basically, that's uh, what this revision is all about, is warning the user of the NEC what took place in the table, 450.3b. Now this illustration deals with this new article 495 that used to be the existing article 490 in the 2020 NEC and we're dealing with general requirements which is part one as you see in the box 10 information to the right of the equipment. Uh, we deal with the scope, reconditioned equipment and other articles. Articles that we would use in addition to this article like Article 235, Brent Circuit Feeders, uh, Services and Brent Circuits, uh, Article 245, Overcurrent Protection, Wiring Methods, Article 315, Joint and Terminations, uh, as well as uh, Article 495 that we're reviewing right now. But you still would go to some articles in the very back of that article, the last part, and deal with uh, uh, high voltage rules such as in uh, uh, Article 250 for grounding and other articles that still would have some high voltage uh, requirements that are not listed in these five new articles we just uh, quoted. And once again, 235, 245, 305, and 315 
and 495 is our five new articles dealing with high voltage and replacing some of the other articles and taking some of the information out of an article in the last part of that uh, particular article. And that's what this illustration is kind of illustrating to you, uh, that we're dealing with voltage over a thousand volts AC and uh, DC voltage over 1500. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with equipment specific provisions in accordance with uh, this new article 495 part 2. Now notice the boxed in information that uh, has the title part 2 equipment specific provisions. You have four sections here. Isolation means voltage regulations, minimum space separation, and backfeed requirements. And you notice in the illustration it is showing your disconnecting means, your overcurrent protection, and what can serve as the disconnecting means to make up the overcurrent protection for equipment located in this new article, 495, and that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with equipment rated over 1,000 volts and it's equipment, switch gear, and industrial control assemblies uh, in accordance with NEC 495 Part 3. Now notice in your call, excuse me, your call out Part 3, switch gear and industrial control assemblies, then you have 19 sections that you need to review. And you notice if you looked at 495.40, which is item number 10 in the part uh, three uh, sections here, it says a visual inspection window. Well, here it is. See? You have to have a window that you can look in and see that the blades are all open where your equipment has this feature, see? And it gives you the National Electrical Safety Code section, and it gives you other National Electrical Safety Code sections to help you with this rule and give you more detailed information. But uh, designing the system and laying it out, this is where you start. And then you use the National Electrical Safety Code for additional information if needed. And that's what this illustration is pointing out when your system is over a thousand volts and you have 1500 volts DC uh, present uh, in your equipment in some manner. And that's what this illustration is pointing out. Now this illustration deals with part 5 to article 495 and it deals with ballers. And the sections to review is 495.70 through 495.74. And you can see part 5 title ballers that you have general rules uh, for these ballers. Uh, electrical supply system, it's over a thousand volts, uh, branch circuit requirements, uh, pressure and temperature uh, limit control, and the bonding means that uh, you get more information uh, in Article 250 for grounding and bonding, last part of Article 250. Main thing to remember though, these ballers are rated over a thousand volts, the overcurrent protection device doesn't have the 80% rule or the 125% rule that you would have to apply. It's just 100% in accordance with 235.408B on page 121 approximately in your NEC. But, you know, uh, let's just call out item number three to part five ballers and the title is branch uh, circuit conductors. Well, if you read that part, they're taking it 100% of the uh, nameplate rating of the baller. There's, uh, anything over 1,000 volts can be taken 100%. It's just 1,000 volts or less that we apply the 125% rule to derate the loading of the protective device 80%. Uh, so keep that in mind, and that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate uh, to the user of the NEC that designs electrical systems for baller systems.